Okay, I'm working on another set of carburetor Makuni uh, double set. Um, I'll show you some things about it. I always write down your settings. I was surprised that the highs on this were only a quarter turn out. Quarter turn out on the two highs for this set. Um, your magneto side, which is the side your stator, stator, magneto, people use those words interchangeably. The lows are one and three quarter. And the power takeoff PTO side, one and seven eighths for the low. But both highs were at one quarter. I was surprised to find that. They had the caps on them. Don't know if uh, they've ever been messed with. And these center caps, it had the plastic caps on this. And this is the half an engine that I got with the uh, junkyard jet ski that I bought from uh, TCH Water Sports. They'll pretty much sell you any jet ski in their junkyard for 500 bucks. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a little high, but when you consider what some of the parts cost, it really isn't that bad of a deal. And all of them are freshwater skis, so you're getting some pretty good parts, like this carburetor that was on that engine. Man, it's it's one of the cleanest ones I've taken apart, and it was exposed to the elements. I truly think that I could just build, clean it, put it back together with the parts that came out of it, and it'll work fine. I've set pop off on this one already um these are 76 they're the highest pop-off of any jet ski i know of they're with the factory uh needle and seats it's a 76 psi now you go to sbt and they'll tell you uh 55 but it's supposed to be 76 it's 55 if you change the seat out to the little bit larger jetting, which some people do to get them to start easier. I've, I've read some of the forums. They, they, they use the, uh, they change out that uh, seat that this fits in to a little bit larger. And then you want to go with the 55 pop off when you do that. Um, what else about these? Oh, just some tips that I've come across this piece inside the carburetor. I've had it be clogged in here and I've had to use a pick to clean it out. I guess it's from old gas or whatever, just sitting. This one was still wet when I pulled it apart, but that port runs to the valve on the back, a little plastic. You can see it shining there a little bit, but that's where that runs to. And there's some other tiny little holes next to it that can get clogged. I use a set of brushes that I bought from Hobby Lobby a while back. They've got these, <coughs> excuse me, near where they have their airbrush sprayers. These are made to clean nozzles on airbrush. Guess what? They work real well for these carburetors as well. I try to leave my stuff factory. I don't mess with it too much. Uh, I use Berryman Chem Dip to soak my carburetors in. I actually prefer uh, the SBT gasket over the WSM gasket. The WSM gasket, these are more of a rubberized, kind of like the factory. If you pull a factory one, it'll be black, uh, rubberized, and it'll have, like the WSM, it'll have the two lines it basically are an extra sealant to seal around this passage that goes from carb to carb. But I found that those uh, WSM gaskets are not friendly for repulling in case you have to do pull the carburetor again, even on a recent build. So I don't like to use those. Uh, I do use them when they're given to me, and that's all I've got. But I prefer that rubberized gasket. It seems to work better for me. Uh, also, when I do these, I make sure that my accelerator pump is good uh, because none of the kits come with an accelerator pump. Uh, that's about a $12, $13 uh, diaphragm in there. Um, you can test it by filling it with WD-40, put it in the hose, um, and push this and watch it squirt. It's, it goes, here's your inlet and it squirts out of the two hoses that come out. I also uh, test these 
right here. I mentioned it in one of my very recent videos. That piece can get clogged. It's the little nozzle that sprays into the venturi from the accelerator pump. I just take WD-40 in the straw and stick it and watch it squirt out of there because um, those can get clogged. It's another thing that I found that gets clogged on these, or in my experience, that's what I found be clogged on them. Um, so that's just a couple of tips for you. Um, I like doing this. I like tinkering with this, but I certainly do not know it all. I like to learn, and I like to experiment, and I like to, you know, the whole process of working with my hands, building this stuff, fixing it, is, I don't know, it's, it's enjoyable to me. I like this type of work. Um, but certainly I don't know everything and I do not profess to, but I hope these videos are helping somebody else out there because, you know, I, there's a lot of things that aren't explained well and, and people have lots of questions, especially when they're doing things for the first time. And, uh, I don't know, the learning curve is, 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 is sort of fun. <laughs> um, anyhow, that's enough talk. Um. Uh, I'll get to putting this back together. I've got some brand new kits coming. McCoolies, don't buy cheap kits, guys. Don't do it. Don't buy those cheap kits. They're you're wasting your time. Set your pop off. Check your pop offs. The thing I like about the Makuni kits is they generally send you when you, they've got a couple of different color springs. If you put the right color spring in, your pop off pretty much going to be where it's supposed to be with that Makuni kit. That's why I like them. All right, see you in the next video.